So in this question, we have a two-dimensional crystal in which the atoms can move only within the plane of the crystal. So it asks us uh, what will be its molar heat capacity near the room temperature. So uh, to determine that, uh, to determine the molar heat capacity, we have to know that for one degree of freedom, uh, any molecule or any atom that has one degree of freedom will have average kinetic energy of half kT. So this should be known to you, where k is the Boltzmann's constant and t is the temperature. Similarly, for two degree freedom, because our our this system of crystal has two degree of freedom in a plane, right? So implies average kinetic energy, average kinetic energy will be two times half kT. So this is equal to kT. Now at higher temperatures, okay, at higher temperatures, higher temperatures means not lower, okay? It doesn't mean like more than 100 degrees Celsius or something like that. It just means that normal temperature, that is, which are not lower, which are not near to 273, which are not near to uh, zero Kelvin, okay? So at higher temperatures, kinetic energy, average kinetic energy equal to average potential energy. Therefore, total energy E is equal to Ek plus Ep will give me 2 kT. Right now, what is K? Boltzmann's constant can be written as R by Avogadro's number, Na. So this is equal to two times. Now Avogadro number is what? Total number of molecules upon this is average. Okay, E average. For one molecule, so Avogadro's number n upon n RT. So multiply this to the other side. E average into n is E total. So E total is equal to total means of all molecules. This here E k. This is for a single molecule. This E k equal to E p. These are for a single molecule. So average energy of one molecule is equal to 2 kT, right? Addition of kinetic and potential give you 2 kT. So the total, if there are capital N number of molecules, then total number of, uh, total energy is capital N into EAV that I denote it as ET. So ET will be equal to 2NRT. Now compare this with, compare with energy is equal to NCVT, where T is the temperature again. So if you compare these two, then you get CV is equal to twice R. Okay. So if it was a three-dimensional, uh, we would get this to be 3R and so on. So, Let us move to, okay, we also want this in joule per mole per Kelvin. So in joule per mole per Kelvin, if we put R is equal to 8.314 joule per mole per Kelvin, then two times of this is 16.628. So 6.63 joule per mole per Kelvin. So this, this is the specific capacity of the solid. All right. So next question B. At very low temperatures, will the molar heat capacity of a two-dimensional crystal be greater, less, or equal to the result found in A? Now, what happens at very low, at lower temperatures, as the temperatures temperature goes very low, 
the kinetic energy goes on decreasing because kinetic energy is what kt right so is less than ep kinetic energy is kt now the kinetic energy goes so less that the product of k and t will be less than the vibrational energy of atoms right let me write this for t very less for t very less what happens kt is less than vibrational energy of atoms so this implies average vibrational energy before it was how much two times kt now Let me write this as average energy is less than 2 times kt. So this vibrational energy contains both kinetic and potential, okay, will be less than 2 kt, which implies, so since E average is less than 2 kt, this implies Cv also lowers. So it looks like the absolute, sorry, the heat capacity decreases when the temperature goes on decreasing you can just also look at uh, look about this in the graph that is shown in the book right so uh, if you see in the graph uh, you can find that it is in figure 18.21 from figure 18.21 it also shows that at lower temperatures the cv of the of this of a three dimensional crystal goes on decreasing okay the same is the case for this type of two two dimensional crystal so this ends the solution for our question thank you for watching